Hello everyone, I'm Stefan Batifo, I'm a developer advocate here at Ziliz. And today I'm here to talk to you about how you can install Milvis on Kubernetes. And we will go through different ways of installing it actually. We will walk through the documentation showing you how to use it either with a Kubernetes operator or with a Hemshot. And then we will deploy it on a local cluster and then we will insert some data directly in there and then we'll see that we can run a query and search directly. So let's go into the documentation. Here, this is the milvis.io slash docs. And then we can go in the get started and install milvis. And then here, we can see that we have run milvis distributed. At first, let's have a look at the requirements. We have different hardware requirements and then different software requirements, which version of Kubernetes you should use, which version of Helm you should use. On my end, I will use Docker and I will use Docker desktop actually to run Kubernetes directly on my laptop. But you could also use Minikube or you can use K3D. It doesn't really matter. Then there are two different ways to install it. One through the Milvis operator and the other one through Hemshot. So if you want to do it through Milvis operator, you can just go directly on the documentation and then have a look how to install it and how to make it work. And then for the Hemshot, it's the same. You go directly on the Helm documentation and make sure that you have a look at the prerequisites. Make sure that you have the Helm CLI installed, that you have a Kubernetes cluster, and that you have the storage class as well. But let's follow the documentation a bit and then we'll go into the terminal and then we'll see if we can make it work. So first, if you don't have it already, you have to install the Milvis Helm chart. On my end, I already have it, but let's see what happens. I can see that you already have it. But if it's not the case, then that's why you would add it. Then after that, what you can do is that you can update the repository if you want to. On my end, I'm just going to run the version that I have, so no need. And then you can directly already deploy a Mivis cluster. So you have the Helm install. On my end, I'm just going to change the name to Milvis. So Helm install Milvis, and then it's the values that you have by default on the Helm. This is then showing you how to install it. To actually browse my Kubernetes cluster, I'm going to use K9S, which is a CLI tool that is very nice that will allow you to browse things visually. So we can see here, we have a lot of pods that are starting, they're running, I will just skip those. Now I'm not going to wait until they're all ready, but you can imagine that like in a bit, they're all going to be ready. But what I want to show you is actually how to customize those values, because now you just install Milvis with the default values that you have for the cluster, but maybe you want to customize it to have fewer replica sets or more replica sets or use Pulsar instead of Kafka. So for that, you are actually going to show the values of the Helm chart that we have. And then you're going to put them in a YAML file. So this is what I'm doing now. Now we arrive in Cursor and we can see we have a very big YAML file. And then here you can change the image that you want, for example, but you can also add some toleration, you can add some volumes. Then if you, do you want to use ingress? Yes or no. Do you want to use service accounts as well? Those are the things that are possible now. The default values for ITD, you have three replica accounts. So if I have a look, actually, we should see that etcd have like three different pods. And now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to upgrade um, Milvus to actually have only one. Because I'm only interested in having one replica account for etcd, I don't want to have three. So then how would you do that? It's like you have Helm and then you're going to run the upgrade command. Because I already have one installed so I can just upgrade our cluster. But then also I have this option here that if the cluster doesn't exist then we can install it. So I define the values that I have in my YAML file and then the name of the release and the product. And then I'm just saying please put it in the middle so we can see that is the second revision. It's because here we already had one that was installed. And now if I have a quick look, you can see that LCD is terminated and then now you only have one pod instead of the three that you had before. Okay, so now you know we've like started Milvis on the cluster. So let's have a look and make sure that everything's running. We can see everything's ready and running. So we're good, all the pods are healthy. So what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to create a port forward. This will allow us to then talk to this cluster because at the moment all the ports are closed and I want to be able to connect to it. So let's go. We now 
have a port forward. I go in my notebook. This one is available directly on the website, by the way. And then let's see. Okay, we can see this one is going to connect to the Melvis cluster. And this one works, so we're happy. Now we're going to create a connection. So first we know if we have it, we drop it, and otherwise we connect it and create it. And now we're going to prepare some data. So I'm actually going to use PyMelvis with the model, which means that you have directly embeddings there. That way I can transform my text directly into vector embeddings. You can see I'm importing it. And then I use the default embedding function. And then we have three documents here that we have. They are about artificial intelligence and where Turing was raised. So now we are then going to encode those. And then we're going to insert those directly. And then we're adding metadata as well about the subject that is history. Now everything has been converted. So now we can insert it. And now this is where we can do the vector search. We're using Milvis directly. So we can be like, okay, who is Alan Turing? And then we're going to search in the document collection that we created, then the um, data that we want to look that has been converted. We only want two numbers of entities, two written entities, and the output fields that we want. Okay, so we can see Alan Turing, and then the first one is he's born there. And then this is like the best result that we have. It's also possible actually to do a vector search with metadata filtering that can actually help you to usually have better results or have more refined results. So you can like skip through a lot of the results that are not relevant to you. We're adding new data about biology. So we add the subject biology here. And then the search, actually, we will only want things that are in biology. So then hopefully now we have no results. It's because we wanted something that is related to AI. And then here we actually want the subject that is only about biology. It's also possible to use queries. So this one, then you retrieve all the matching entities, like with the specific criteria. So here it would be, okay, let's get everything where the subject is history. And then we can see we have all the data that we added before. And you can also delete entities. So you can delete them by ID directly. So this is what you can do here. And now we can drop the collection. And now, you know, we should be happy. Something else that you can do is actually you can also check the state of the cluster on the web UI directly. So you go to your localhost UI, and then you have a lot of different information about your cluster. Okay, first your cluster is running well, you're running on the distributed mode, and then you can check the different components that you have. Also that the dependencies are healthy, that everything is working. And yeah, then you can check the different tasks that you want, the different tasks that the cluster is doing. And this one is very useful actually to understand what's happening and if you have some problem with latency or something. So yes, hope you like this quick tutorial and looking forward to hear what you're going to build with members. Thank you.